vegetables that grow in partial sun or shade. There are a lot more than you think. So for this video, we are looking at 13 vegetables that will thrive in three to five hours of sun a day. Full sun, which is what we think is necessary for garden plants, is typically six to eight hours of direct sunlight per day. This is going to be a longer video, but I will add timestamps and hang on to the end for my surprise experiment. You will need to take a good look at the green space or yard and decide where you can grow things. In urban areas, buildings and mature trees are going to provide shade. You may also live in the woods. Map out where you have shade and when. Watch how your space changes as the sun moves from east to west. Morning sunlight provides high intensity light without excessive heat and is perfect for cool loving plants like greens and peas. And I can tell you, I have grown a lot of veggies on a patio that faces east. Afternoon sunlight doesn't provide the same light intensity, but is generally warmer than the morning sunlight. Many herbs will often do well in afternoon sun. Use buildings and trees to your advantage by developing areas that receive different amounts of light and putting in plants that thrive there. Keep in mind that some plants may grow a tad slower in the shade. So let's go over 13 vegetables plus that surprise that will do well in partial shade. I have videos on all of these and in-depth articles on the website if you want more information and feel free to ask questions in the comments. Hi and welcome. I'm Amy, a master gardener and environmental educator. My most recent book is an in-depth guide to vegetable gardening in, gardening in zone six and coming out soon will be one on growing fruit. Even if you are gardening in partial shade, you will still need to consider the moisture needs of the plants. A garden in the morning sun will not lose as much water to evaporation as a garden in the afternoon sun. If you are using drip irrigation system, your shade garden will need to be separate from the full sun garden since they will need different levels of moisture. When hand watering, remember to water the ground, not the plant. So we are going to start with some classic greens that are fabulous to grow for salads and cooking. Arugula is a crisp, lesser known green that many people don't grow, but it's well worth the time and space. It grows fast and adds a peppery flavor to meals. It is in the brassica family and grows well in cool weather. Arugula grows well in a shady spot and will thrive with as little as three hours of sun a day. Morning sun is best, but you ha if you have an area that gets late afternoon sun, that will work as well. They will germinate well in temperatures between 40 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Seeds take about one week to, to germinate. Plant seeds about half an inch deep in the potting soil or directly into the garden. Gently cover the seeds with a thin layer of fine soil. Water the newly planted seeds using a gentle spray or watering can. The soil should be moist, but not waterlogged. Space them about six inches apart. Swiss chard needs a bit more sun than arugula and does best with at least five hours of sun. They will hold up to afternoon sun as well. Chard can grow in three or four hours of sun, but that is pushing it and the stalks will be thinner. I love Swiss chard for its fun colors and ability to stand up and remain firm during cooking. Swiss chard is great braised and does well, go and it goes well with pasta. Plant seeds about half an inch down. When chard seedlings start to make true leaves, I like to give them some fertilizer. Chard does like its nutrients. I typically use half strength fish emulsion or a fish kelp blend. They are related to beets and thinning is important. Transplant out six inches apart in rows 16 inches apart. They like a neutral pH and compost rich soil. Water in well. I plant out in early to mid April under row cover. My rescue turtles love Swiss chard. Kale is another crop that will thrive in only three to four hours of sun a day. 
It loves the morning sun and is very productive and hardy. I often grow it like a green, but it is in the brassica family along with cabbage and broccoli. Kale's ideal growing temperature is 55 to 75 degrees. Kale will even tolerate frost and light snow. It will die back when temperatures get below 32 degrees consistently. Providing a heavy layer of straw mulch around plants will help extend the season. Start seeds four to six weeks before your last frost. Kale likes rich soil, so lots of compost. They also need calcium, so bone meal is a good additive. Green sand will add nutrients and loosen up the heavy clay soil. Lettuce comes in hundreds of varieties, and it's definitely worth taking the time to read descriptions. That way you can find the lettuce that is best for your growing areas. Lettuce will thrive in three to five hours of sun each day. Lettuce likes to grow fast, so make sure you have a growing bed prepared. Mix in lots of compost to add nutrients and maintain moisture consistently. Most lettuce prefers a cool growing temperature between 60 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. A shady garden will help your lettuce stay happy all summer. Cutting lettuce can be planted densely. I love growing a mix of colors. Plant very shallow, about fourth of an inch deep. I typically make a small indentation with the racer side of a pencil. Place the seed in the indentation and sprinkle some soil on top. Lettuce likes bottom water, so I typically set the seed tray with holes and a larger tray filled with water. The minimum soil temperature should be around 40 degrees when you direct sow. Lettuce is great for succession planting. I plant it every two weeks from March to October. Mustard greens are a true southern favorite, and we often think of them as growing in a sunny field. However, they thrive in partial sun of about five hours a day, and you and will do well if you have a spot getting afternoon sun. Mustard greens come in several leaf shapes and colors. Red Giant on the left is my personal favorite and has a mild mustard flavor. They have better heat tolerance than other varieties. Scarlet Frills, which is on the right, has ruffled leaves and looks fabulous on salad or in salad. You can grow mustard greens for baby leaf, which takes about three weeks, or allow the plant to get to full size. Maturity takes between 35 and 45 days, depending on the variety. They like a germination temperature on the cool side of about 55 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit and emerge after 7 to 10 days. Sow seeds about an inch in loose soil. If you direct sow, you can sow seeds in the ground two weeks before the last frost date. Like lettuce, spinach can be planted fairly close together. It'll do well with at least four to five hours of sunlight, and like most greens, thrives in morning sun. Germination is best between 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It will even germinate in soil temps in the 40s, but much slower. When temps climb above 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius, the germination rate seriously diminishes. Eat your spinach so you grow big and strong. Spinach is also a good source of calcium, so your shell will be nice and hard. Peas, please. Peas are a crop we don't often associate with shade. However, they will do quite well in part shade as long as they get four to five hours of sun. I had sugar peas last year on my patio that got about four and a half hours of morning sun and actually did better than the ones in the main garden. While peas are traditionally planted directly in the soil, I have successfully transplanted sugar peas. This extends the season by a couple of weeks and gets the plants off to a solid start. I typically plant in pots around March 1st in a warm room. Space seeds two to three inches apart and in, two, in rows that are 24 inches apart for bush types out in the garden. Bush beans will actually handle some shade. Not pole beans, they prefer for full sun but bush beans can go down to about five hours of sun a day. But know that a pro the production may be lower. 
These beans grow about two feet tall and don't need support. They form a small bush shape and are easy to maintain. However, picking them means bending over or crawling up and down the rows. For direct sowing in traditional rows, maintain a spacing of three to four inches apart between the plants. For the rows, you should maintain at least two or three feet apart or give yourself plenty of room to go between them. After planting them directly in the soil, cover with a thin layer of soil to assure the seed is about one inch deep. Observe proper spacing for beans to allow for good air circulation. This helps protect them from viruses. So now we get into root crops, which do vary a bit in their light needs. Beets will grow well in partial shade. However, the less sun, the smaller the beets will be. But the greens, which are edible, will grow well. So three to four hours a day for the wonderful greens and small baby beets. Five hours of sun a day if you want full-size beets. Beet seeds are a compound seed that actually contain three to five seeds. Thinning is a must. If they are growing too close together, they will not form beets. Thin beets three inches apart for smaller varieties and four inches for larger ones. Plant rows 12 inches apart. Beets generally take 55 to 65 days to maturity. However, in less sun, you may need to add, add about 10 days to that. I love raised beds for root crops, especially ones I plant in the spring. With raised beds, you can really tailor the soil so you don't have any obstructions. My raised beds are 10 inches deep and filled with compost, potting soil, peat, sometimes green sand, and some garden soil. Carrots are a bit fussier than beets when it comes to light. They definitely need closer to five or even six hours of sun each day. Shorter or smaller rounder carrots do better than full length ones. Carrot seeds take four, 10 to 14 days to germinate, so be patient. Thin to two to three inches apart with rows 12 inches apart. It's always nice to share carrots with a friend don't worry, rescue groundhogs are released in the lower field and not by the garden. Turnips also have tasty leaves. Hykuri is the turnips that made me a convert. A small salad type, they are just delicious. Only 38 days to maturity and the tops are also delicious. Plus, they will do well in part shade, so four to five hours for the smaller turnips. The larger turnips do need more light to reach their full size, so maybe stick with the smaller ones. And of course, we cannot leave out radishes. They grow fast and thrive in shade. Radishes will grow well with only three hours of sun a day. There are many types of radishes. These daikon radishes are a sweeter variety. Radish should never be limited to just salads. There are a lot of ways to use radishes, and in fact, when I was writing my book, Growing Vegetables in Zone 6, I discovered several new ways, like these carnitas tacos and pickling them for tasty snacks. Direct sow radishes, seed, seeds one inch apart in rows four inches wide for the round ones. For larger root style radishes, seed them three inches apart and in rows 16 inches apart. Onions are a mixed bag. If you just want to use the stems, that works. Green onions will tolerate partial shade, but if you are going for a full size onion, it needs full sun. The stems are great for chopping up and flavoring dishes. You can start onions in so many ways from seeds, sets, or transplants. Most varieties can be grown as green onions. Slugs are basically snails without shells. Because they have no natural protection, they feed at night, which can make them hard to spot in the garden. And the bad news is both snails and slugs love shady areas. Slugs hide during the day in cool, moist spots in your garden. So keep a weed-free garden, especially around vulnerable plants like lettuce. 
Mulch has many benefits for plants, such as keeping in moisture and discouraging weeds. Just remember that it also provides a lovely habitat for slugs. So for bat infestations, I use Sluggo, which is an Omri organic product. Sluggo is made of iron phosphate. It's granular and you sprinkle it on the soil. Supposedly it's safe for pets and wildlife. For more tips on getting rid of slugs, check out my video called Natural Ways to Get Rid of Slugs in Your Garden. Another way to expose pests is to till the soil. If you are in a woodsy area like this one, you should till shallow so you are not chopping up the roots of trees and bushes. Not only can this damage the tiller, but it can encourage spreading into the garden area. One benefit of a woodsy garden like this one is that you encourage birds, which will prey on garden damaging insects. An example of succession planting, this was taken March 5th, planting kale, lettuce, and spinach under cover. As the weather warms, I will remove the garden fabric. Then when it gets above 75 degrees, I will cover the bed with shade cloth. In some instances, you have natural shade to work around, and sometimes you just need to create shade for your cool weather loving plants. In this case, you can build a shade arbor. This is one of my raised beds, and I've just added shade cloth over my lettuce plants so they cannot, so they are not as quick to bolt or become bitter tasting. So my surprise shade plant is peppers. So you may know last year I had surgery in the springtime, which definitely inhibited my gardening. So I put a lot more emphasis on the patio garden because it was easy to get to and easier to take care of. And I grew two types of peppers that literally thrived. So on the left are the banana peppers in a grow bag that got about five hours of morning sun a day compared to the same variety in the main garden in full sun. These bell peppers, which were on the patio, were even closer to the building, getting about four and a half hours of morning sun and produced spectacular. If you want to learn more about my patio garden from last year, check out the video I have on using grow bags. Hopefully you will have time to relax and enjoy your garden this season. Check out my individual growing videos for crops you plan to grow. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful sunny day.